Welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. I am Catherine. Here we are, guys. I am sitting in one of the chairs. See, I told you guys I was so excited about getting that stripe down the center of these chairs that I was willing to do whatever to get it done. And let me just tell you, it was not as hard as I thought it would be, but it was also a challenge for me because I didn't want to remove the armrest because that had to do with some specific little detail things that I would have to redo all over again, like applying this detail here in case I pulled the fabric too hard. And I did not remove the armrest. I removed the seat cushion cover. I removed the back of the chair. I removed, of course, this back as well, that's what I'm talking about. And then I just sewed that stripe down the center of all three pieces. And guys, here we are. So let me share those details with you today. Easier said than done. I have to be honest about that, but it is a challenge worth doing when you get a result like that. Okay, let's jump right into today's video. No formal training here on how to do upholstery. I've read books, I've watched videos, and that has given me my confidence. These are the chairs from the very first try. The first time that I did the upholstery on these chairs, I created a template. I folded it up and I tucked it away inside my upholstery tote. So this time around, it was really easy to take out these pattern pieces and just cut the fabric. It is storming outside and I wanted to really work on my project. So we're gonna work right here in the living room. These chairs are not dirty, they're not dusty, so why not? I removed the dust cover, I removed as many staples as possible from underneath the chair uh, with my little mallet here assisting me with my staple remover. And I got it done, guys. And listen, if I didn't have to recycle any of this fabric, I probably would have just taken an X-Acto knife, a razor blade, or even um, a box cutter and just cut away the fabric around the staples and tap the staples in. I've gotten furniture pieces like that before. And it is a time saver. If you're not going to recycle the fabric, then you can just cut it away from the chair. What I am showing you here is along the side of the chair, underneath the armrest. You see that's that fabric that I want to get rid of in the seat cushion. There were some staples that were stubborn, they broke. Well, I just tapped those in and didn't worry about them so they would not scratch my new fabric going in or my hand. And also guys, all I have to do is cut this away with the X-Acto knife pull it off and that's it. And now I can place the new fabric. I really wanna stress this part because it is a game changer and a time saver. You can do this along the front as well with an X-Acto knife. Just cut it away around those staples and tap them in. I'm not using wood filler. I'm not a professional upholsterer. This is my project and this is how I am loving on it. Removing the back panel where there is tacking strip was pretty easy. You see how I am using the teeth of the hammer to pull that away. I'm also wearing gloves to make sure I don't scratch myself, but it comes out pretty easy, guys. This is the original tacking strip, and I tell you, you'll never find anything else made like it. What's being made now is very flimsy. This is cardboard stripping on the back of the chair. It gives you that nice curve and crisp look at the top of your chair along the back, as well as underneath the arm of the chair. So that's how everything looks basically seamless. And once again, I need to recycle this fabric, so I'm going to remove the cardboard stripping. I labeled all of my recycled pieces first. Top, bottom, etc. Now my new stripe is going to be around eight inches wide, and that excludes the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance on both sides. 
I have declared this one day as cutting day. So I cut out both of the seat covers, the back, and everything I needed basically. And keep in mind, I do not go crazy with cutting all of these long strips along the side. I leave intact because I can use them to design the pillows that I want for the couch. I thought it would be a great idea to cut all of my new navy strips first. I cut them to the length of the pieces where they would be inserted in the center. So that way I could include those actual pieces in the measurements. So as you can see here, this piece I'm cutting, I've cut on a fold and then I open it up along the side. I then insert my navy piece and I basically am back to the original size of the original piece that I'm going to insert on the chair. And that is how you also save fabric so you can do other things with it. You have to think ahead. This is the back panel. You don't complicate it. It's the original piece, we're recycling. All I did was cut it in half, insert my new navy strip, and then cut away the excess according to the original measurements. So the top stitching here is exactly like the top stitching on the seat cushion. And I have lined up this stripe from the seat cushion to the back of the chair to the outside back of the chair. And I'm using tacks to hold it in place, you know, the entire piece of fabric. So when I start to staple, I'm not pulling that off centered as I'm stretching the fabric a little with the stapler. There are boards along the sides of the chair and along that front armrest. So I am marking those areas so that I can cut that fabric away from those areas and then I can just tuck it under inside the fold and you don't see it. And then everything will still look smooth. I really encourage you to go back and watch the original video because I am kind of speeding this up a little bit because I've covered these chairs before. And I've got the fabric here, the seat cushion fabric here, 
and I am cutting away just a horizontal line because I know that there's a board there right at the point of those scissors and I know that there's one in the corner. So I've got this piece that I'm going to be able to pull through into that opening underneath the armrest onto the bottom of the chair and I'll be able to pull that tight. And that mark that I'm going to make around the front part, lower part where my finger's going, that part is going to have to be cut in little bitty pieces and then tucked underneath itself around that corner. I did not want to remove the armrest because that was a lot of work before because I'd never done this and I certainly didn't want to reinvent the wheel since I'm going to be using the same fabric anyway. So this worked out beautifully. I'm able to push it underneath and then make those little dark cuts a little bit later, which you're going to see. I pulled one of the seat covers off so you could see what I was talking about. You see in those little cutouts, so it'll fit around that piece of wood. And here's the next part where you're going to make these little cut darts and be able to tuck them under, just fold them under themselves. This is not going to be perfect because I didn't film it. I don't know why, but in the original video, you'll see me do this but this is how you do it. Just cut around this because there's a board there and then make those little darts and you'll fold it under and you'll play with it until you get yours right. Just play with it. And I will say this, it's better to undercut than overcut. So I'm very cautious here. Uh, I don't wanna have too much fabric cut away that I end up with the hole on the bottom left here where my hand was just placed. You don't wanna do that. See how far I am away from the edge of that armrest? It is so much easier to duplicate the same steps on both chairs at the same time because that way when you think of a quicker way to get it done it becomes easier and more efficient and a time saver. Now it is possible when you are cutting your pieces for your inside back that you can just cut enough fabric to extend to the back, outside back of the chair. I don't like using the heavier fabric for this because I make it so narrow with foam and all of that that it's good for me to just add a little piece of poplin fabric like that brown fabric, hand stitch it, and then pull it through. It doesn't take up that much space. a little bit see I've already started right here and I'll show you how I made that look come to life even this corner right here will show you the difference we add batting batting strips that you have left over I've completed at the sides of the chair, so this is the perfect time for me to put everything back in place. I'm going to staple down the new cover for the seat along the sides, and I'm also going to staple down the outer arm of the chair. Restaple it, because again, we did not take that off, and the sides will be done. This is so good to do right here because it keeps that center stripe that you've just put there firmly in place as you are working along the front and the back of the seat.
Now to complete the front of the chair, you wanna to come to the corner of that front left or right leg, and you wanna staple in at an angle, and then pull the fabric over that stapled area, fold it back, and then you will add your glue to secure the fold. The staple secures it, but the glue holds that nice, neat, crisp fold that you made in place. Just a little hot glue. I made a mess of the very, very first one because my hot glue gun was just on a rampage. So, but anyway, just letting you know that you check your glue gun on something else before you just go ahead and put glue on your chair. I made a mistake and um, yeah, anyway, we get over it, right? Now I do use clear hot glue to assist with anything that I might be concerned about fraying. As you can see that cut edge along the chair leg here. So if you're concerned about something fraying, maybe the areas where I removed the staples and there are little runs in the fabric, then I'll add a drop of clear glue underneath the chair in that spot. I am applying staples at a pressure of 60. 40 is not good, at least not for me and these heavier staples that I'm using. So I'm using a 60 pressure. Almost done, we're on the back of the chair now. I've got my chalk here. I'm just marking where the actual wood is so I can staple in that cardboard strip. Now this time around, I applied the cardboard strip in pieces, not one long piece. It just made it easier to shape that area. And I cut away the excess fabric. Well, let's proceed with caution. We are applying that metal tacking strip. You see how thick this is, guys, and how sharp it is? Yes, please be careful. There is a flexible one that you can get on Amazon. I will link it in the description box if you're interested. And you stick this through the fabric underneath. But first of all, measure the edge. Measure it to the edge of the fabric. And then you fold it inward toward the back. And you'll see me do it here. And then you use your mallet and gently hammer it in. And I'm telling you, it's very sharp. It's like a hundred little nails right here just doing the job for you. So you definitely want to make sure that, oh, your mallet, make sure that you cover it with something. Sometimes it'll leave those little black marks on it. Um, a Ziploc bag is great or a piece of fabric wrapped around it. Whatever you feel is best, but don't directly use the mallet on the fabric. I've done that before and I keep forgetting that it does leave a black mark. And I am now applying the metal tacking strip, putting on the outside back. You start on the left side to the right or right to the left, but you work your way down the back of the chair. And you wanna try to keep the fabric equally distributed on both sides or evenly distributed. You don't want to have those little crinkles, but unfortunately I do. This fabric has been stretching on the back of this chair for some years. It is repurposed. So it's already been pulled and having taken it off, I now see the result of that. And begin stapling the fabric to the bottom of the chair from the center. I love these upholstery pliers. They help me so much.
think you thought it was a task worth doing, I hope you did. And I tell you, all it takes is a little motivation and all of that potential inside of you will come out as well. And you might just find yourself taking on a project just like this. I think it fits nicely with the seat cushion cover that I put on the couch. And this is all going to connect. What is the next project going to be? Well, we've got pillow covers to make. And then we'll tie in our new look. I have fabric that I purchased from Bobby Bobby two weeks ago for a 40% off sale, which was beautiful. And I can't wait to share that DIY with you. So we're gonna do maybe two or three types of pillows. They all will be the same. And then from there, we'll jump over to the walls and do our DIY art. I'm still looking for a rug to pull it all together and be intentional, making sure that the rug is the last piece that I select because I would have fully gone into the direction that I want to go in. Well, that's it for me, guys. I want to thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks a lot for watching. And as always, stay in prayer and stay creative.